Well, uh, th this has changed over time. Uh, uh, at first, when we began our work at the Innocence Project, uh, and there's a problem within the system uh, generally, there were all kinds of what we call procedural bars uh, to getting a post-conviction DNA test, much less being able to offer the results in court. Uh, in fact, there were no states that permitted post-conviction DNA testing, and uh, there were only nine states that said that you could raise uh, a claim of newly discovered evidence to show that you were innocent at any time. Uh, so many states had uh, time limits, statutes of limitations. Uh, in Virginia, there was an infamous 21-day rule. 21 days after the trial, even if you found new evidence of innocence, you couldn't put it into court as newly discovered. Uh, in other states, it was one year or two years or three years or six months. I mean, there were all kinds of problems like this. So we were able to <clears throat> get past now uh, in uh, uh, 48 states statutes that allow for post-conviction DNA testing. Uh, and uh, Massachusetts is one of the statute states that doesn't have a statute, but you can, based on what they call common law, you can uh, usually get a test result, but they should pass the statute. Uh, so the point here is that there were, from the very beginning, uh, there were all kinds of impediments to even getting this evidence into court. And at first, when we went into court and we said to prosecutors, oh, well, look at this case. Uh, there's uh, uh, an obvious basis to do a DNA test and it could prove somebody innocent and maybe identify the real perpetrator. Why don't you consent to it? And in many instances they would. Uh, many instances they did not, uh, not for particularly rational reasons, I must uh, tell you, um, which is really, I guess, the subject of your question. Why would anybody resist this, right? And then even after the DNA proof came in, why would uh, prosecutors still say, oh, no, 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 we're going to uphold the conviction? And that is a, a, a question of for cognitive psychology. <laughs> uh, and uh, a lot of people have thought about it. I think there's a number of factors. Uh, the first is very simple. It's human nature. People don't like to admit they're wrong. We're all like that. Uh, number two, uh, and maybe, uh, well, I don't want to give primacy to any of these. They're all work together. Uh, there's the problem that when somebody's convicted, uh, there's a victim uh, or a victim's family in the case of a homicide. Uh, and the prosecutor uh, has said, well, this defendant is a horrible person, a beast, an animal. In some instances, they would say, killed this person, committed this most heinous of crimes. Uh, and now you have to go back to the victim's family and say, oh, guess what? We were wrong. Well, that's very difficult. Uh, for the, a victim or a family, and we see it so often in these sexual assault cases. Uh, in particular, there was eyewitness misidentification. So hard for somebody that's been uh, subject to such a brutal crime to now, who, who made an honest mistake in making a misidentification, to now say, oh my God, I was wrong. I mean, you feel doubly, triply violated. I mean, it's a horrible burden to carry. So there's a lot of reluctance. Uh, to upset victims within a community. So that's a second factor uh, that inhibits prosecutors sometimes and uh, police from uh, acknowledging uh, a wrongful conviction or even opposing an effort to get a DNA test. Um, and then finally, and this may be more subtle, but I think it's a, a very, very important factor, uh, because in a lot of cases, we would find the prosecutor who was standing in the way of the DNA testing or refusing to acknowledge the obvious implications of the new evidence uh, wasn't even in office <laughs> when the crime was committed. Um, and the reason, I think, uh, that some of these prosecutors were so reluctant uh, 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 to go along with what was, I think, a, a clearly just outcome or even to find out uh, uh, the truth or get better scientific evidence that would uh, shed light on the truth is that they're afraid of the next case. So if we have an exoneration and an eyewitness identification case, and now I'm trying a new case in front of a jury, the jury had just heard about this big exoneration, and they're always big news. They should be, too. Uh, and they're going to be thinking, ah, well, maybe I shouldn't trust this eyewitness, or maybe that case involved uh, police misconduct. Maybe I shouldn't trust the police. Or it was a false confession. Maybe I shouldn't uh, uh, be so... Uh, uh, sure that a, a confession means that somebody is really guilty. 
um, and on it goes. So I think that they're worried about the next case. The truth is that um, if you're a prosecutor that has a reputation uh, for going back and looking at old cases and correcting errors, uh, I think that your reputation for reliability goes up. Mm -hmm.